Hi and welcome to this week's Walk the Woo Way. Tonight we're talking all about the inner child. What is it? How do you work with it? And for a lot of people, how do you do the work to heal your inner child? So to begin with, David, we have always a lot of kind of confusion and conflicting ideas in terms of what our clients believe the inner child is um, for them. So do you want to give the Wu Wei teaching on, on what we believe and what we teach as the inner child? Yeah, so first of all, I think it's quite understandable that there's a lot of confusion and I hear a lot of confusion because the truth is there's no definitive answer. I can only give you the answer that we, in the Wu Wei model, when we talk about the inner child, what we're talking about. And so a lot of people say, is it the ego? Is it uh, the subconscious mind? Is it your thoughts? Is it your beliefs? And really, it's all of those things. Mm -hmm. To me, the inner child is a part of your mind. Now, the Taoist monks call it the kernel, the root, right in the core, the center of your mind. And that part of your mind has been affected during your childhood. The normal ages that I experience as a practitioner yeah. is between the ages of six years old and nine years old. And what I notice, and I'm not saying this is mm. the same for everyone, but what I notice is this particularly affects a sensitive child, boy or girl. And what happens is their sensitivity develops quicker than their cognitive reasoning. And then something happens during those formative years where their cognitive reasoning, their thinking, and their, kind of their logic. reasoning yeah. Yeah, and their okay. logic is catching up with their emotions. Okay. So something happens. Now, here's another thing I want to em em emphasize. Obviously, I specialize with people who've been abused in, ma in many ways. But don't always think that it has to be on the serious end of the spectrum. A lot of my clients were, would say, well, it wasn't so bad for me as a child. And it's not about how bad the experiences were. Mm -hmm. It's how you dealt with those experiences. In fact, let me give you the other side of the coin. Some people who've been overly protected as a child yeah. can have inner child issues. Okay. And what happens is that part of your mind, that kernel, almost gets locked, gets blocked down. And then everything goes through that filter. It's almost like you've diverted the river. You know, often in these talks, we talk about how Taoists talk about energy is like a river flowing down. And it's, also, it's almost as though, <clears throat> excuse me, it's almost as though you've diverted the river through the eyes of the inner child. And which what, is locked. Which, which is which, stuck, okay. is stuck. And why I like, and I, I just let you ask all the yeah. other questions, but what, why I like to use the term of the inner child it's because that part of your mind can act like a yeah. little child. And we know that. And we that's, and that. that's yeah. why I like, I think that's the best name for okay, it. Okay, so what you're saying is um, <clears throat> the inner child is part of our mind, is very much part of us, the energy of our mind and our thoughts and our beliefs. It is us. It is us. It's not separate from us. No. It's not, as some people think, like a separate entity or, or anything like that. It, it's or it's a, not your enemy. Not your enemy. It's not... Um, so it's part of us. It's not out to get you. We all have that in a child. We all have that in a child. But for some people, if when they're younger, and you say between the, the ages of six and nine, but of course it could be younger than that Slightly or a little bit older, older than that. But that type of okay. age Okay. So for some people, if they have... Um, an event that happens to them when they're young. Or a series of a, events. A, or a series of events which uh, triggers very, very strong emotions in them that they can't kind of logically get their head around or, or rationalise. That almost, that it, it creates a shock for them as a child, which yes. gets locked in. That's right. Well, the, what happens in, in my view and working with people is that part of the mind, the child, then has to deal with that tsunami of emotion, very powerful emotion. And then the child says what I call the vow, V-O-W. It's that powerful. It's like a vow that continues the rest of their lives. And what they say is, it must be me. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong with me. 
And when the child has that belief, that vow, it's buried deep in the kernel. And from then on, the child believes. And even when they grow up to adult, and I'm talking right through the age of 60, 70, mm -hmm. 80, that belief, that vow is still implanted in their mind. And locked in. And locked in. And, and so therefore they see the world through these kind of spectacles. Yeah, yeah. So I guess it's like part of your energy of your mind being held in an immature state. Yes, now you could say that. And, and then you try and describe it. So that's a quite a useful way to describe it. You act immaturely. You say things uh, that aren't quite mm. correct. It, it's sometimes, for a lot of my clients, it's almost like there's somebody else there talking to them. But it uh, isn't that. It isn't. But it no, isn't it isn't. And yeah. that's very important. It is your mind, but mm. it's your mind that is not matured. Can I give you the Taoist yeah. teaching on that? So the monks teach this in a lovely <laughs> way. They say, imagine a beautiful garden full of flowers and produce and the birds and the bees are flying in and out and everything is working and everything is growing and everything is healthy but there's a little patch and there's a little patch there's all the rubbish has been put on top and although the seeds are there the seeds haven't germinated and that's how they see it you've got to clear all the rubbish away water the ground and then the seeds will germinate mm -hmm. and that's what you exactly you have to do to that kernel in your mind i would say it is very successful if you are comfortable with the term the inner child it's a very successful way to deal with these issues mm -hmm. because at the end of the day when you're doing the Wu Wei model that's what we're doing we're going down and we're rebalancing and we're reharmonizing mm -hmm. those misunderstanding mm -hmm. and those misguided thoughts yeah so um, as an adult uh, we can experience our imbalanced held locked in in a child in in lots of different ways and we, we talk about this idea of the squealing piglet or the temper tantrum so the squealing piglet <laughs> and the temper tantrum is the description of how the child will sometimes act so if you've had children you know this i had a lovely daughter this was her favorite trick when things didn't go her way she'd stand up tall as she could stamp her foot and she'd storm upstairs and you could hear her bang 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 then she'd get to her bedroom and slam the bedroom door and that's sometimes exactly how the mind works mm -hmm. it doesn't want to address the situation mm -hmm. it will do everything it can it will avoid it will move out of the way it will invent other things it will have righteous indignation it can be very stubborn it can be extremely <laughs> stubborn yeah. i know i do <laughs> within a charge every day but you've got to remember it is a beautiful gorgeous awesome yeah. little child yeah. and you know it can be one stubborn little <laughs> miss or madam or sir but it's not stupid yeah and what it's craving above all is education i call it emotional education mm -hmm. what it's craving above all is the knowledge how to deal with difficult situations yeah. can i give you one mm -hmm. thing you'll nearly always find not every case so i can't be general but you'll nearly always find that when you look down to it the child will say something along the lines of it's not fair it's not so the inner child has a real issues with perceived unfairness injustice black and white when it feels good like and bad if you feel like you've been hard done to or you've been wronged in some, you've been wronged, some way oh, or you're faced with a situation which seems unfair um, or somebody doesn't undeserved. act in the way that exactly. you think so they the should act. the inner child really kind of rears its head. But equally, in situations where you're being challenged or pushed out of your comfort zone, a lot of people say, you know, their inner child is very scared, yes. very fearful, yes. very doubting, yes. um, just wants to hide away. Can I explain yeah, that? Yeah, sure. The reason for that is because it remembers the original tsunami wave mm -hmm. that created the vow. So the inner child is not stupid. So it's saying to you, I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not going to have the same thing happen to me again. Let's stick on the familiar. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself, would you prefer the road of familiar, even though it doesn't work, 
or would you prefer to step yeah. out on the unknown? Yeah. The inner child will always go on the road of familiar. And we have a saying for this, don't we? Better the devil you know. And there's no devil. It's just what it's wanting to go on the familiar road that it's used to, that it believes it's in control of, even if it's not successful. Mm. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of clients asked us that, you know, I guess they're kind of concerned that if they start doing some inner child work or start facing up to the red light emotions that their inner child's creating for them, whether it's frustration, anger, uh, being scared, um, or, you know, they, they, they even talk about being kind of blocked or locked in a corner, just as a child would be. Um, they are very apprehensive about this idea of starting to do inner child work because for a lot of uh, people who kind of strongly sense there are issues with their child from their childhood that haven't been dealt with that have almost been covered up and put in a box but these red light emotions keep seeping out despite them trying to put the lid back on the box they're very apprehensive about doing the inner child work because they're they are scared that it's going to open up a can of worms so i mean i guess the first question is can you move forward positively emotionally spiritually um with without touching the inner child work or do you really have to kind of face things head on and, and knuckle down and start to work with the inner child well the answer to that i don't understand as how you can because you're trying to move on as almost disabled Part of your mind isn't with you. Part of your mind is fighting against you. Mm. Part, part of your mind is always giving you this way out. Uh, don't, come, don't do confrontation. What other people think about me is important. I'm worried about pleasing mm. others. I, I can't do this. I can't do that. What happens if I'm not perfect? What happens as if I'm fail? And this will produce red light upon red yeah. light upon red light. And then you live your life in what people call, who don't use our method, stress, anxiety, mm -hmm. depression, mm -hmm. panic attacks. Mm -hmm. It's because they're trying to placate the child. But what you're saying is very important. And can I use an analogy here, which I hope will really help you. If you have the opportunity, look at Channel 4's programme, Super Nanny. <laughs> yeah. This is the greatest example that I've ever seen. It's called Super Nanny. And this a lady who's supposed to be a nanny goes into a home that's trying to deal with a very difficult child. Disruptive. Disruptive. Unruly. <laughs> extremely you've yeah, seen them yeah, haven't yeah, yeah. you i mean you wouldn't believe a child could be that bad and when you hear her talking to the mother what you understand is the mother's done exactly what you have said they've said oh you can't do nothing with him or her mm -hmm. oh you just leave him oh he can't do anything he's running the house oh they've he's kind just, of given up on the they've child given up. They've, they've, they're uh, ignoring them ignoring but they, the child's still kicking, kicking making, in fact making, making more, it worse. more uh, tantrums more, more red squealing lights. piglets yeah. Yeah. because the child can't run the home yeah. and so what does super nanny do and I'll cut down the story but it's really worth I think it's not live now but it's probably on their iPlayer channel 4 what super nanny does is first of all says to the mum what would you like to happen and the mum normally says it would be wonderful if I could get him to bed at nine o'clock at night. Mm. <laughs> and so, but there's no chance. He'll never yeah. do it. So what Super Nanny does is takes all the video games out, all the stuff, the television is out of the bedroom. By this time, the child is going apoplectic. Yeah. <laughs> is having a squealing piglet. Now, his mum would have done what? Give up. Give up. Give Super up. Nanny Walk doesn't. Away. Walk away. Try to ignore the problem. That's right. Super Nanny doesn't. And then the super nanny says, nine o'clock, bedtime. The mother puts the child to bed. And for the first night, as the mother walks out the bedroom, the child follows her out. And the super nanny says one thing to the child. This is the only time you're going to speak to this child. You say to the child, nine o'clock, bedtime, you're going to bed. She puts him to bed. She walks out. The mm -hmm. child follows her. She puts him to bed. The child follows her. This can continue all night, all night, a hundred times, hundreds the child might of get times, up. yeah, up until about two o'clock in the morning, yeah. where super nanny's on the stairs. Mm -hmm. The mother says to super nanny, oh, mm -hmm. "Can just let him come to my bedroom this yeah. one?" And super nanny says, "No, what's this? This is inner discipline. Self discipline. No, you said nine o'clock." 
bedtime is nine o'clock. But she does it with compassionate self-discipline. Firmness, compassionate. Firm. Firmness, not aggressive. Not aggressive. Not aggressive. Compassionate yeah. self-discipline. They keep on putting the child to bed. And then by about four o'clock in the morning, finally the child sleeps. Now, the amazing thing, I could go on all day about this, <laughs> but I won't use up the video. The amazing thing about this is the second night, it doesn't happen so much. The third night, not so much again. Mm -hmm. By the end of the week, the child is going to bed yeah. at nine o'clock easily. Yeah. And that's exactly what you have to do with your inner mind, with your inner child. Yeah. You have to try that compassionate self-discipline. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the, the, the principle is to persevere, um, to first of all, listen to the child, yes. acknowledge them, because often you may not have done that in the past. You have ignored them. You've kind of pushed them down, tried to kind of cover up the red light emotions and the, and, and, and the squealing piglets it's giving you. So to, to acknowledge the child, to listen to it, to say that, you know, we're working together now, but I'm, I'm now in control. I'm going to help guide you through this. That's a really good point, you know, and that's one of the most important points is you have to listen to the child. Yeah. Because what the child is saying, you may not have the answer to. And that's why people don't listen yeah. to it. And that's why he tries to ignore it. You know, when the child's asking you all these questions, why is the sky blue? Why is the earth? <laughs> yeah. And you don't know the answers. That's why the child will keep on asking you the questions. And what you've got to do, you've got to answer those questions. That's yeah. why I call it emotional education. Okay. It's very important to be honest, to be trustworthy, to speak your truth, to carry on bringing you and the child together mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. one. As a team. As a team. As a team, but you're, you're the parent, you're the compassionate, self-disciplined parent, you're working with the child, and together you're as one. That's right, and this is the oneness then. You remember the what you call the yin-yang sign, the tai chi sign with the thing? This is the idea of the roundness, that we're all one, we're all together. There is no separation. It, it wants sometimes to believe there is, and it will convince you that it's somewhere floating out here, talking at you. Yeah. You're not good enough. You can't cope. You're, you're not worthy. Because it's trying to keep in control. And that's what it's trying to do. It's trying to get you down the road of familiarity. Mm -hmm. Don't fall for it. Mm -hmm. This is where you've got to be compassionately disciplined, strong and firm. Listen to what it's saying and give it the correct answers. And, 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 and I guess essentially it's about educating the child to know, to trust you um, and to mature that part of your mind that was held. And once you kind of, I guess, give the child a lesson, the truth of the reality of how things are now in the real world, that it misunderstood as a, as, a, as the younger version of you, then that, I guess, releases the energy, it releases the block. Well, yeah, because it, it sees the real world, it sees reality as a scary place. Yeah. It sees reality of somewhere where it can't function. It sees reality as somewhere it wants to run away from, to lock itself mm -hmm, as in the mm -hmm. bedroom. The mind is trying to keep you safe and protected. That's why a lot of my clients misguidedly punish their inner mm, child mm. instead of loving their inner child, listening to their inner child and educating their inner child. Because if you do that, you'll make a very formidable team together. Yeah. If you create this separation, it weakens both of you. You've got to learn this bringing together to bring back this awesomeness. That's why being truthful, having honesty, living with in a good integrity is so important. Yeah practicing compassionate self-discipline and having a good firm intention is really helpful because it helps you keep in my analogy keep putting the child back to bed yeah. and you'll be amazed how quickly it starts to learn and it starts to play ball with you and come <laughs> along with yeah. you brilliant well i hope i'm that's... sure there's a lot more <laughs> there are well we, i mean it's a huge teaching it's a huge subject um but i hope that's given you uh, a greater understanding about what is the inner child how to recognize it and how to work with it so you can be a harmonious 
a formidable team together. As always, if you've got any questions or comments, please post them below and uh, we'll be very happy to answer them for you. And remember, you're awesome. <laughs> and you're awesome. Believe you're both and awesome. You're one, you're one, you're one and, you're awesome. and you're awesome. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.